In this video, we're going to look at activity six, input form B. We've already completed form A in the previous video. Just a reminder that the structure of the tables provided should not be changed in any way. Do not add validation to the tables. And do not change any data types. You'll only be required to use TBL machine and TBL machine reading. Let's have a look at form B. So form B is an input form to analyse meter readings. The form must not include validation for any fields. The form must not include any automated routine to save the data. There must be a combo box to select a machine ID. For the selected machine, the user inputs the week beginning date, the meter reading and the money collected. The information for that machine must be generated and displayed on the form. The highest meter reading stored in the table for that machine, which is the most recent meter reading, the number of drinks sold, the amount of money expected, and the words call engineer should appear if the money collected is less than the money expected by more than £10. I've covered the completion of the Activity 6 template in a separate video. Before I've actually gone into Access, I've sort of planned out what's going into this form. You may have time to do this yourself. You can draw on papers in the exam. It may be a good um, thing to do when you're practising preparation for the exam to do this planning and it will make you get quicker at reading the paper and identifying what's required. So let's just have a quick look at what I've created here. So I've got the title, Auto Vending Services, Meter Reading Form. And they're going to have an instruction, uh, data input is required. We've got the combo box drop down to select the machine ID. We've got the week beginning date, the current date and the money collected. They're all require input from the user. And then below that we've got the area uh, which shows the previous reading, the number sold and the expected money. And then at the bottom of the form we'll have the words call engineer displayed if appropriate. Now on this design I've just quickly identified and named the controls. So the machine ID control is going to be called CBO machine ID. The current reading, TXT Cur read. The money collected, TXT money mum call. The previous reading, TXT prev read. And number sold, TXT no sold. And the expected money, TXT exp mum. I've also on here just quickly put on any formatting. The money collected needs to be currency. Also, the money expected needs to be format for currency as well. Now, this area here, which is all calculated on the, by the form, I'm going to set as uh, disabled. I'm going to en enable no, so that the user can't key anything in. I'm also going to take off the scroll bars, the record selectors and navigation button. And then just at the bottom here, I've just identified where we're using functions and calculations. So that previous reading, we're going to use Dmax to find the highest meter reading. I'll explain that when we actually do the form. The number sold is a calculation. That's the total current reading minus the previous reading. And then number three, the expected money is the number sold times by £1.20. And then that call engineer display, we're going to use the if function. And in that if, we're going to find the difference between the expected money and the collected money. And if that difference is under by more than £10, we're going to display call engineer. Otherwise, we're going to display nothing. We're in access now, and I'm going to start creating the form. So go on to create. This time we're going to use form design because we're not basing this form on a table or linking it for input. 
and here we've got a blank form. First thing I'm going to do is save it. I'm going to call it FRM meter reading. Always use FRM as a prefix to your forms. Something I quite like doing, if you go onto all and we have a look at the caption, I'm just going to change that to machine meter reading form. The other thing I'm going to do while I'm here and I've got the form property sheet up is I'm going to take off the scroll bars, the record selector and the navigation button. So again, put them into alphabetical order, just makes them easier to find. Navigation buttons, we said no. Record selector, we said no. And scroll bars will be neither. So that's just set up the blank form. Next thing we're going to do is put on the title, controls, sorry, label. I'm going to format that. Pick out the same colour that I've used in the report and the other form. And if you want that centering, just click on the centre. Let's put on the other part of the Again, format it, same colour, I'll centre it and bold. I'll just increase size a little bit, so that's the titles on. Next, I'll put on the instruction to the user. Let me start putting on the controls. So the first one is the combo box for the machine ID. I want the combo box to get the values from another table. TBL machine. I just want the machine ID as a selected field and it shows them what's going to appear in the drop down. Then we'll put on the week beginning, the current reading and the money collected. These are text boxes.
going to put on a line, just break the form up. And I'm going to format that. Choose a colour which is appropriate. And also I'm going to make it a bit of a thicker line. Next thing to do is to put on the two, sorry, three controls where the calculations are carried out. And then I'm going to copy that line again and put it underneath where the calculations are. I'm going to format the labels here. Just select them all. Now these labels here, I'm just going to bold. I'm not going to colour them because when I disable the controls, the labels will be greyed out as well. I'm going to now indicate on the form where input's required. I'm going to copy this control here and paste it three times to go next to the week beginning, the current reading and the money collected. Now I'm going to name all the controls so that we can use them in any calculations or in any functions. So the machine ID needs to be called CBO machine ID. The week beginning we don't refer to again so we can leave that. Current reading we will be using, so we'll call that txt cur read. The money collected we'll be referring to, so we'll call that txt mon call. The previous reading we will be referring to, so we'll call that one txt prep read the number sold we'll be referring to again so we'll call that one txt no sold and then the expected money we'll be referring to as well so we'll call this one txt exp mon 
That's a good idea at this point to save your form as you're going along. Because remember in this exam, you do get marks for what you've done. So if you've done some formatting, change the layout and things, that will attract some marks. Even though at the end your form may not work 100% correctly, you will get some marks. Next thing I'm going to do is disable the controls that we don't want the user to have access to. So we just select them. Go on to data, enabled, no. Just come back to the form view just to check what we've got so far. I need to move this asterisk and instruction over. It looks a bit strange out there on its own. This machine ID that needs formatting blue and put a space in between machine uh, and ID. We start doing those calculations and functions. I've just pulled up TBL machine reading just to show to you. I'm going to select this first machine. And if we look along, the highest machine reading is 1833. So that's what I'm going to use when I'm testing the form when we're doing the DMAX. So let's go to this previous reading and enter the DMAX. So we go to control source, click on the ellipsis, we've got the expression builder. So equals DMAX. Always select from the options that are presented to you. One thing it's a lot quicker and the other thing you make less errors. So the first thing we want to do is look in the field with that meter reading. Now, if you can't remember what things are called, if you expand your database, expand your tables, have a look at TBL machine reading, it's actually machine reading, not meter reading. So in quotes, machine reading, close quote, then a comma. So basically what we're saying there is go and find the highest out of machine reading. The next thing is the domain and the domain is the table that we want it to go and look in. So again in quotes, TBL machine reading, then close quotes, then a comma. And then we've got the criteria. And this is basically where we are telling access what to match up with on that TBL machine reading. So we want to match whatever's selected at this machine ID here on the form with the same machine ID in our table, TBL machine reading, and then it will go find the highest machine reading. Again, if you can't remember the name of things, all right, let's expand the forms. Let's do all forms and form meter reading. And you can see we called it CBO machine ID, that control. So where CBO machine equals machine ID in the table. Close the quote, close the bracket. Press enter or OK. And it's come up in the control source here on the property sheet. And we can see it in the control there as well. Shall we have a quick look and see what happens? So we selected machine ID, the one we said we'll select, and it's picked up the previous reading. If we just change that, let's see what happens. So it hasn't changed, therefore we probably need to do a re-query on that machine ID. So let me just go back into design view. Click on the machine ID, 
Would a right mouse click? Build event. Macro builder. And OK. And the action is a requery. And save. And close. Just save the form again. Let's go back. Yeah, it's changed now, look, the previous reading, so we do need a requery. Let's go back. There we go, it's changing. So you definitely need a requery on that machine ID. Next thing we're going to do is the number sold. And the number sold is the difference between the current reading and the previous reading. So click on the control, go into the control source, click on the ellipsis, back with the expression builder. So this one equals txt current reading minus txt previous reading and OK. I'm just going to say keep saving as we go along. OK, let's go back to the form and just check that, see what's happening. Happening. There's nothing in it at the minute because we haven't got a current reading. So let's put 1860 in here. And it's worked out our number sold to be 27. And that's the difference between the current and the previous reading. Next control is the expected money. And this is a calculation. So if we click on the control, go to the control source, click on the ellipsis. The expected money equals TXT number sold times by £1.20. And OK. Again, let's go and have a look in the form. And it's worked it out. That will need to be formatted. Let's just put some money collected in while we're here. Let's put 22 in. We've got some data in now. Let's just check this week beginning as well. OK, that's not been formatted to date, so we need to format that as well. So a couple of things. We need to format the week beginning. We need to format the money collected and the expected money to currency. We also need to format, I think, all these cells, probably not the currency ones, but the other ones, to the right of the control. So week beginning, go on to format, click on the down arrow and select short date. Money collected and expected money. Need to be formatted to currency. And then that current reading, previous reading, and the number sold need to be formatted to the right of the cell. There we go. Let's put a week beginning in. We've got some data in our form now to work with. Just to finish the form now, we need the control on the bottom, which displays call engineer if the difference between the collected money and the expected money is greater than £10, or it's down, should we say, more than £10. Click on the control, go to the control source and pull up the expression builder. Now for this one we're going to use the if function. The first thing we need to do is find the difference between the money collected and the expected money. So I'm going to put in another bracket.
and subtract the money collected from the expected money and close the bracket. So it will work that one out first because it's enclosed within the brackets. And then we're going to say if that's greater than £10, so that's their expression, then a comma. Then we've got the true part. What do we want the computer to do if that's true? We want it to display call engineer. Then a comma. And then we've got the false part. Again, what do we want the computer to do if that's false? We literally just want it to display nothing. So two empty quotes and then close the bracket. And then click on OK. I'll format that while I'm here. OK, let's have a look at the form. So in this case, the money collected was 22. We were expecting 32.40. So the difference is £10.40. It's down £10.40. So call engineers being displayed. Let's change this money collected to 32. The call engineer has disappeared because the difference is only 40 pence. One final thing on this form, I'm quite happy with it. I've carried out some formatting. It looks balanced on the form. I just need the asterisk next to machine ID so the user knows they need to make a selection there. different data into the form just to test it. I changed the machine ID to the next one. I put in the current reading 3600 and the money collected 119. The previous reading was 3500 so that's a difference of 100 and the expected money there's only a pound difference so that call engineer is not displayed. Let's just change this money collected to something like 109 okay that difference is more than 10 pounds and therefore call engineer is displayed in the next video i'm going to show you how to complete the activity 6 form template which has got the details for both forms on